consider the following region R and vector field. So we are given the vector field F is defined by the components minus 3y minus 4x, and R is the region bounded by y equals 0 and y is equal to 36 minus x squared. And we're asked here to evaluate both integrals in Green's theorem, or in flux form of Green's theorem, to check for consistency. So I want to start here by recalling the flux form of Green's theorem. Remember that Green's theorem is showing us how to convert between a line integral and a double integral. So we have our line integral of the closed curve C of f dy minus g dx. And Green's theorem shows us that this is equivalent to the double integral over the region R of the divergence of f, our vector field, which is defined as the partial derivative of f with respect to x plus the partial derivative of g with respect to y dA. Again, this is our divergence of the vector field f. So we want to start here by sketching our region R. We have the y-axis and our x-axis. We see, looking at our bounded region here, that R is being bounded by the x-axis and the parabola 36 minus x squared. So let's say there's 36 on our y-axis. So we have a concave down parabola, which will intersect the x-axis at positive 6 and negative 6. And we also have here that this region is being bounded by the x-axis, which is defined as y is equal to 0. Then we have our upper bounding curve, 36 minus x squared. So this is our region R that we're shading in. Oops. And so from this, we can see that R is the set of all ordered pairs, x, y, where y is being bounded above by our parab our parabola and bounded below by the x-axis. So you can say that y is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 36 minus x squared, and that x is greater than or equal to negative 6, less than or equal to positive 6. And we'll also make a little note here that our vector field, which is given to us, we know has components f, g, and here f is being defined as minus 3y, and g is being defined as minus 4x. So we're ready now to go ahead and use Green's theorem to check for consistency. So we'll check the double integral first. And we'll keep in mind as we proceed here that the double integral of Green's theorem is the double integral over the region R of the partial derivative of f with respect to x plus the partial derivative of g with respect to y dA. So the first thing that we need to do is compute the divergence of the vector field. So again, using that given vector field, we have f and g and we need to take the partial derivatives of our components. So you can see that the partial derivative of the component f with respect to x is 0, and that the partial derivative of the component g with respect to y is also 0. So therefore, the divergence of our vector field is equal to 0 plus 0, which gives us 0. And we'll even make a little love note here to ourselves that since the divergence of our vector field is zero, we say that it's source free. And 
And now we're ready to go ahead and compute the integral here. So setting this up, we have the outer bounds will be x from negative 6 to positive 6. Our inner integrals bounds are from 0 to 36 minus x squared. And we found the divergence of the vector field was 0 dA. And we know that this is going to give us a final answer of 0. So this is the answer to the first portion. And what we want to do now is check the line integral for consistency to make sure we still get that same answer of 0. We are checking the line integral. And again, just a friendly reminder here that this is the line integral over the closed curve C of f dy minus g dx. And if we think back to our picture here, we'll notice we're going to need to break this up into the sum of two line integrals. So if we quickly think back to our picture of the bounded region, we'll define our two curves here. So you have the parabola on the top, and then the x-axis, or y, is equal to 0 on the bottom, from negative 6 to positive 6. So making note of our orientation here, you know we're moving in a counterclockwise direction. So our line at the x-axis, we'll call this c sub 1, and that's going from negative 6 all the way through to positive 6. So let's go ahead and we'll parameterize this first curve. So again, this is c sub 1, defined by the smooth curve y is equal to 0. So we'll go ahead and we're going to let, with any smooth curve with our parameterization, we let x be equal to d. And so our first parameterization vector, r sub 1 of t, will have components x sub t, y of t. So we know that x is equal to d, and y is equal to 0. So we just leave this as 0. And this is for t being greater than or equal to negative 6, less than or equal to positive 6. This is the parameterization for curve c sub 1. And then very similarly here, we want to go back to our curve, and we're noticing, again, continuing in a counterclockwise direction, that our second curve here is defined by the parabola. But this time, we're moving in a counterclockwise direction from positive 6 to negative 6. So parameterizing our second curve here, C sub 2, we have y is equal to 36 minus x squared. And again, because this is a smooth curve, we let x be equal to t. So we say that the parameterization vector r sub 2 of t, again with components x of t, y of t, will this time be defined as t, and then we're replacing x with t in the parabola. So this is 36 minus t squared. 4, t is greater than or equal to 6, and then moves to negative 6. So we have the parameterizations for both curves, and we're ready to go ahead and set up the line integrals. So we're going to set up the line integral for the first curve, c sub 1. So keeping in mind that we were given the vector field with components fg being defined as minus 3y minus 4x, we need to rewrite the components f and g in terms of t. So you can say that our 
vector field f in terms of the parameterization r sub 1 of t is going to be equal to minus 3 multiplied by 0 and then negative 4 multiplied by t. And keep in mind here that we're using this parameterization, we're using this x and y value to replace the y and x in our vector field. So this simplifies to 0 minus 4t. And then we'll also need to go ahead and find the differentials for the integrand of our line integral. So again, using r sub 1, we know that x of t is being defined as t. So if we differentiate with respect to t, so dx dt is equal to 1, and then going ahead here and multiplying both sides of this equation by dt, we have the differential dx is equal to dt. And very similarly, we have y of t being defined as 0. So the derivative of y with respect to t is 0, showing us that our differential dy is 0. So we have our differentials as well as the parameterized components of our vector field. And we'll use these to set up the line integral. So by Green's theorem, we know that the integral of c sub 1 is going to be f dy minus g dx. So this is the integral from negative 6 to 6 of f, which is 0, multiplied by dy, which is also 0, minus g, which we have as a minus 4t, multiplied by dx, which is dt. And so this leaves us with the integral from negative 6 to positive 6 of 4t dt. And this integrates to t squared from negative 6 to positive 6. So we have 2 multiplied by 36 minus 36, which leaves us with 0. So that is the solution to our first parameterization with the line integral. And now we need to do the same thing for c sub 2. So we want to set up the line integral, the flux line integral, for our second parameterization, c sub 2. And so we'll keep in mind here that our vector, r sub 2, has these components, x of t, y of t, which we found to be t, 36, minus t squared. And this is where t is greater than or equal to 6, less than or equal to negative 6. So we're moving in that counterclockwise direction. So we need to parameterize our vector field, which has our components f and g being defined as minus 3y minus 4x. So we have the vector field parameterized by vector r sub 2. It's going to be negative 3 multiplied by 36 minus t squared, and then negative 4 multiplied by t. And we can simplify, we'll distribute this negative 3 through to both pieces, which gives us minus 108 plus 3t squared minus 4t. So these are the parameterized components f and g. And now we need to go ahead and compute the differentials. So we're going to compute dx and dy, again, using vector r sub 2. So here we have that x of t is equal to t. So dx dt gives us 1, or the derivative of x with respect to t is 1. And again, solving for dx here, we have dx is equal to dt. And then very similarly for our y component, 
Here we have it's defined as 36 minus, minus t squared. And if we take the derivative of y with respect to t, we are left with minus 2t. And solving for dy, we see that dy is defined as negative 2t dt. And so we will use this as well as our parameterized vector field, vector f of vector r sub 2, to set up the line integral. So the line integral over the curve c sub 2 is f dy minus g dx. So this is the integral from 6 to negative 6 of f, which is minus 108 plus 3t squared, multiplied by dy, which is negative 2t dt, minus g, which is our negative 4t, multiplied by dx, which we have defined as dt. And so we'll need to simplify a little bit here. We'll distribute this piece through, and then we'll combine up our like terms. So we end up with 216t minus 6t cubed. That's all multiplied by dt. And then we'll have plus 4t dt. And so you can see if we were to distribute the dt, we can combine up those two like terms which leave us with the integral from 6 to negative 6 of 220t minus 6t cubed dt. And we are ready to integrate. So we have 110 squared minus 3 halves t to the fourth from 6 to negative 6. And so we're ready to evaluate here, and we have 110 multiplied by a negative 6 squared minus 3 halves multiplied by a negative 6 to the fourth minus 110 times 6 squared minus 3 halves times positive 6 to the fourth and we keep in mind that whether you're raising a negative, like a negative 6 to an even power, or a positive 6 to an even power, we're going to get the same answer. Right, so this leaves us with 100. We won't do the whole math out here, but we'll have 110 multiplied by 6 squared, whoops, squared, minus 3 halves times 6 to the fourth, and then if we were to distribute this negative through, we see that we have minus 110 times 6 squared plus 3 halves times 6 to the fourth. So everything cancels out, leaving us with zero. So what have we confirmed here? We can say, therefore, the closed curve, or the line integral of our closed curve of f dy, minus g dx. Okay, we broke that up into the two pieces. We saw our first curve was 0 plus the second curve was 0, leaving us with a beautiful final answer of 0. And so this confirms Green's theorem. We've shown that whether we're using our line integral form or you're using the double integral form, over this region R, you will get the same answer, zero.